Good morning, dear friends. We are gathered here to celebrate Mass of Friday, the seventh week of Easter. We are just a few days away from the from Pentecost, and so in this Mass we come to pray for the new experience of Pentecost on this Sunday. We pray for the sevenfold gift of the Spirit, that God may bless us, this new church, with this new experience. I also pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. Pray that God, who hears our prayers and who is ever present to attend to those needs, may address every of your needs. We pray for the sick, pray for seniors, pray for those who are denied justice around the world, especially minorities everywhere. We pray and ask that God may help us develop our sense of justice, fairness, and equality. I also like to pray for our medical staff, especially here in our hospital, who risk themselves every day to provide care to our very, very sick. I pray for those in critical care. May God be with them. May God help them. May God heal them. I pray for those who have birthdays today or anniversaries of one form or another that God may give you many more years to celebrate those events. And I invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. Our opening hymn today will be a hymn dedicated to our Blessed Mother. Hail Holy Queen and throne above. Hail Holy Queen and throne above, O Maria, Hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, Triumphal ye cherubim, Sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven on earth we sound the hymn. Salve, 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 Regina. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate this great gift of the Lord's Eucharist on his table. From this altar, we bring all your intentions and trust that God's angels may bring all of those intentions to God's altar in heaven. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of your Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, 
the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was, it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against the charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accuser stood around, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jew who had died, but whom Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could see him, I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards all those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. Hallelujah. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you all that I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said this to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying what kind of death he was going to glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
My dear friends, I will reflect with you from the Gospel reading and the first reading. From the Gospel reading, we hear how the Lord Jesus encounters Peter for the last time, the very last time before he ascends and wanted to hear from Peter if he truly loved him. It's almost like the Lord wanted to renew his contract. But to renew that contract with Peter, he needed Peter to confirm three times if he loved him. And the Lord went ahead to let him know what love truly means is if you love me there is a way to show to demonstrate that you love me you must tend feed my lambs you must tend my sheep you must feed my sheep now realize what is going on here the Lord did not ask Peter had you loved me did you love me had you any love for me? So the, the Lord wasn't interested in whatever had happened in the past. So he wasn't asking Peter about the past. Not the deniers, nothing mattered to him. He was asking Peter, right now, right here, do you love me? And, and that, has, that has importance. It has relevance for you and for me. Because too often, we are stuck with our past. Meanwhile, the Lord is moved over, moved, moved away from our past, moved on from our past. He cares about what we are doing now. But there is one person I know who cares about our past more than anything else. Definitely not him, because he paid for all of that. He paid for all of that. He knows that. He has a receipt. It is in his blood. He paid for all of that. So he doesn't care about your past or my past or anything else that is in our past. Doesn't care about that. But he definitely cares about what you can do right now, what I can do right now, and what I choose to do right now, or what you choose to do right now. And that's why the question was put in the present continuous tense. Do you love me? Not whether did you, had you, do you love me? So that question is put to you right now, and it's put to me, and it's put to everyone who professes the name of Christ. Do you love Jesus? Do you love me? Now, that's not a question I can answer for you, or anyone can answer for the other. That's a question that we must answer ourselves, because the Lord made it clear what love for him entails. He tells Peter, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. That means you must take care of the things I care about. You must take care of the people I care about. That's how you show, that's how you demonstrate that you love me. And that brings me to the first reading. I'm sure there is no one in our country right now who has not seen what is going on in Minnesota with a 46-year-old African-American who was sadly, cold-bloodedly killed. I don't say murdered, say killed. Because murder, it belongs somewhere else. That is something, a legal category. I don't have um, the privileged information to make that judgment. But I know he was killed. And it, it's something, unfortunately, that is too sensitive for too many, especially for someone like me who is black. Because the, once you speak about it, immediately you are accused of racial bias or you are accused of black racism 
or you're accused of being unfair to the police or you're accused of something else. But for this moment, I, I would like us to just whatever clan, and I mean clan, whatever tribe that you belong to, whether you belong to um, a white tribe or a black tribe or a Republican tribe or a Democratic tribe or you belong to an independent tribe or you whatever, Latino tribe or Asian tribe, let us just put all of that down first for one moment because that doesn't belong here right now. I, I want us as we see what is going on here in the first reading Realize, let me read that to you. Paul is brought before the tribunal. Scripture says, When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered that it is not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he had faced his accusers. It's also not an American practice that we will hand a sentence of death to someone before he is brought to the tribunal. It is not. That means a police officer, it doesn't matter how, does not have the right, no one has the right to take someone's life without authority. And so what was happening to Paul is what I see happening in so many ways across our country, but also across the world. It is called injustice. And injustice is not just race. Injustice, unfortunately, is not something that is new. It's a concept that has lived with us almost throughout the entire spectrum of human history. It is characteristically something that is endured or tolerated by weaker groups. And it is perpetrated by the powerful and the strong groups. Women, in my opinion, have endured the most injustice in all of human history. Black people have endured a lot of injustice in the course of human life. Today, we do have other minority groups, whether they are those who are same-sex, religious minorities, poor people, seniors, unborn. These are all victims of injustice at any and every level of human interaction. Injustice isn't just racial. But until we come to a point where as a people, we do not allow our clans or we do not allow our tribes to define what injustice is like, we may never be able to rise, to rise to the ideals of our nation and the ideals of a free society. Because if something happens to a black person, and all we see is his blackness. There's something wrong with us. If something happens to a white person, and all we see is he or her whiteness, there's something wrong with us. If something happens to an unborn child, and all we see is a clot of blood, there's something wrong with that society. If something happens to a gay person, and all we see is that person's gayness, there's something wrong with us. And until we are able to rise above all of that. I'm afraid most of us may have carried the badge of our Christian faith and end up being condemned. Because I remember the words of Jesus. He says, unless your spirituality rises far above that of the scribes and Pharisees, you may never enter heaven. And what was he saying? Unless we overcome our sense of hypocrisy, we may never see heaven. So for once, I want you to, whatever political affiliation or whatever lens you carry, to look at injustice. The German philosopher Immanuel Kant says, 
in this categorical imperative that wherever justice is, in, is done to one person, wherever that person is, whoever that person is, and I look and do nothing, that is injustice done to anyone and everyone, wherever that person is in the world. So if injustice is done to me and you say nothing about it, that's a failure on your part. It doesn't matter what race you belong to. It doesn't matter what gender you belong to. It doesn't matter what faith you profess. There is something that describes every one of us. It's our humanity. And when we come to a point where we can no longer see and respect and honor the humanity of the other, there's something, something tragically wrong in a world like that. I must tell you, my heart is broken. I am traumatized by what I saw. And I'm sure you should too. We must rise in this moment and do what Jesus said to Peter. We must rise to feed the Lord's sheep. Now, you know that sheep is a very dependent creature. It's a very weak creature. It needs a shepherd. It needs someone to protect it. They're very weak in our society. They're very old. They're unborn. Those potential victims of human injustice, they are the ones Jesus referred to when he says, feed my sheep or tend my lambs. They are the ones that you should protect. They are the ones that we should protect. We believe that we are all Christian people. We are all godly people. We are called to speak out whenever we see those very weak people exploited, abused, degraded, and dehumanized. They are God's children too. They share something that you believe in. They share something that you hold dear. Your dignity as a human being. And so we pray, dear friends, at this time, we pray. This should not be how we define ourselves. That there are some people who are more important, more valued, more dignified than others. Not in this country. Because the very founding documents says every one of us was created human and equal. May, may God help us to rise above our clannish natures and our tribal natures and embrace this one great ideal the freedom of a great people. As always, I like to end whatever I say by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, I, I just want to thank you for everything that you do. I must tell you, my heart is broken. Not just because this guy, this person killed was black, but because his humanity was so, was so abused and devalued. I beg you, dear God, to touch the minds and hearts of everyone here in our country and around the world to recognize that we are called to affirm and to honor the humanity of the other person, whether that one is an unborn child or a poor person or seniors or sick or black or Asian or white or whatever, that we are all your children and we carry and bear the image that is yours. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick, pray especially for our sick here at Waterloo. We ask, dear God, that you may stretch forth your hands of healing over everyone who is sick, especially those in critical care. Help them, dear God, to find healing and to return home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who have died, especially those who have died from our hospital from this coronavirus, and those who have died around the world. We beg you, dear God, that you may grant them rest, that you may help their families and loved ones find strength, healing, and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our medical staff who endanger their lives and reach themselves every day to care and provide care and healing to our sick. We ask, oh God, that you protect them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people, the very weak of our society, especially all those who are victims of injustice and human indignities around the world. We pray, Almighty God, that you may help us establish policies that will protect the rights of every human being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own intentions and for every concern that you're bringing here to God today. We pray that God may accept them and that God may grant them. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now ask our blessed mother to intercede with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of your Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But at this time above all to Lord yet more gloriously. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that he, that we, his members, might be confident in following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the, like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Timothy Broglio, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all those we have lost to this coronavirus, O oh God. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your, of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to you and to your families, may God's peace rest with you, abide and remain with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This moment of spiritual communion, let us ask our blessed Lord, who is our shepherd, to bring us nourishment, to bring us refreshment, and to bring us fullness of grace. Most compassionate Lord, as your children are still unable to participate and receive you physically. They desire you spiritually and they ask for that communion with you. Visit them, O oh God, wherever they are right now and administer this sacrament spiritually to their hearts and to their souls and to their spirits. May your blessing ever protect and keep them safe in their homes. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. O oh God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for participating and sharing in this sacrifice. Pray that God may watch over, that God may protect you, and that God may keep you safe. As always, I like to end everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. And as we have shared today, I just want you, wherever you are, stop for a moment. Bring out whatever lens you are using to see the world. For a moment, just see the world as a human being, not as a white person, not as a black person, not as an Asian person, not as a Latino person, not as a Christian or a Muslim or anything. Just for one moment, see the world as a human being first and see that injustice is not okay. The recipient or the perpetrator not be standing. It is not okay. Let us pray for a more just, for a fairer, for a more hospitable, and indeed for a more tolerant and accommodating world. We need it for ourselves and for our children. The Lord be with you. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God watch over and bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star. So strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love.